Good morning. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Is there anybody there? Let's just get rid of that on the screen. There we go. How's everybody today? Anybody there? Um, hopefully I'll get a notification to say that the sound is good. Yes, it's Tuesday again. Groovy Tuesday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? These Tuesdays, they just come round quicker and quicker and quicker. It only feels like yesterday we was here doing the same thing. So, now did you all do your homework? Remember what we said last week? So last week we was looking at colouring in, wasn't we? Um, and concentrating on getting some real nice blends using the pencils. So um, we'll give a few people a chance to, to come into the room. And, um, and then today I thought what we'll do, we'll do some other different colouring techniques. And we'd also do some, um, oh, here we go, text message. Sound is brilliant. Thank you, Lucy. So, okay. So yes, I thought we'll do some more different colouring techniques. We'll, we've concentrated on the pencils last week. And I thought we'd have a look at the Pergolina pens and show you different ways of using those. Also the Dorso crayons, because I know a lot of people who've got those at home as well. So I just thought we'd break it down and we'd just have a look. And I'm going to do it on my practice piece because I've nearly finished my complete piece. So let me just have a look there. There we're going. Oh, there we go. All oh, the messages. Good morning, good morning, good morning. A bit chilly down here in Kent today. So long sleeve shirt on today as compared to last week, which was a short sleeve shirt. And um, yes, so I thought what we'll do is we'll, we'll take it nice and calm, groovy Tuesday, and we'll just, we'll experiment and we'll play. So we've got our practice pieces. So I think I'll just have a quick sip of coffee. Have you got your tea, coffee, water? fruit juice, whatever you've got with you. Oh, that was uh, nearly spilled that then. So, okay, so Jilly should be in the room with you shortly. If you've got any questions or you don't know where to look for anything, then just ask away and Jilly or Lucy will be there to help you. So, okay. So should we have a bit of a recap on what we did last week? So, this is where we were last week. So last week we coloured in our beautiful flower wreath, didn't we? And I thought what we would do, the homework for you, was to colour in your butterfly and colour in your words that you'd put around the outside. So I, for my homework, I say my homework, I finished it off this morning when I came in, and I've kept the colours in the same way. Now if I put a piece of white card underneath, you can see how I've, I, remember I said to you I was gonna keep with the same colorways. Let me bring it in on this camera here. So remember we did those lovely little flowers using the red and the yellow and we blended those in. And then what I did, I kept my butterfly in the same colorways. And then do you remember what we also did at the bottom where we put some color on the front just to give it a little bit more definition. So I thought what we'd do, what we said we'd do today was we could put the background in because obviously we now need to sort of bring that to life. Especially on white card, it looks quite flat. However, if I take my piece of, this is, I love this, this is in, from the Indian summer, absolutely gorgeous. And when you pop that on there, the color tones really do work well together. But we need to bring that landscape forward so that it sort of doesn't get lost and it's just not line art. So I said I'd show you sort of a couple of different tips for colouring in larger areas. So for this what we're going to do we're going to stick with our B pencils that we was working with last week so I've still got the same colours that I used to colour in. We're also going to be working with our Dorso oil 
Okay, now if you've got other sort of blending oils, it will work the same. If you're using the uh, polychromos, Faber-Castell pencils, you can use a Dorso oil with that just as well. Then we're going to need a tissue or a piece of kitchen towel. Tissue is better, especially if there's no pattern on it. Okay, and what else are we going to use? And we're going to use the mix mats. Now I know I was picking the orders yesterday from yesterday's shack. A lot of you have gone for the, the mix mats. So you get two in the pack, one for oil and one for water. So we're going to be using the one that says oil. And we're going to bring in that background behind so that it then sort of makes it jump. Once we've done that, I thought what we'd do, we'd have a look at some, oops, wrong camera. <laughs> there you are. I thought we'd have a look at some of the other mediums that we can use to color in. So we've got the, the Perga color pens. So these are beautiful. You've got 30 in a tin, they're water-based. And what I love about these is that they're double-ended. And what I mean by that is you've got a really fine tip to get into all the fine detail and then you've got more of a bullet tip on the other end for larger areas. Now as I explained last week, sometimes these can be a bit intense in colour. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get some really nice soft tones with that. One of the other mediums we can use are the Dorso crayons. And these come in two different colourways. We've got the lively colours and we've got the natural colours. And what's key to this one is that you've got the black and the white in this set. This is the natural colour set. And you can then mix your colours together. So where you've got a red or a purple, you can add some white and you can blend them together, just like you can with the pens and also the pencils. But these are lovely. They're really, really, and they last a long time. Okay, so I thought what we'd do, we'd do our background first using the pencils, which we've all got. And then I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks on how to colour in the other, other areas if you've got different mediums. You can use the artistry ink pads as well because they're a water-based ink pad. So on the mix mat, again, we can have a look at all that as we progress throughout this hour. So I thought once we've done the colouring of our butterfly or the background of our butterfly, we'll have a look at the different colouring mediums and then I know a lot of you've been asking about the finishing tricks on how to attach it to your card because you've spent the last couple of weeks building this and if you want to give it to someone then I can show you different ways of attaching it because parchment could be quite difficult because it's translucent you can put tape behind it but it can show in areas so we'll go through a few little finishing tricks I mean a lot of my samples that I've worked with this was one that I've done previously. I've used the corner punches and I'll show you how the corner punches work. And what it means is that you can move it around, you can take it out, but the corner punches are not just for parchment, you can use it for your other craft as well. But it gives it a really nice finish without showing anything. Okay, so what I thought we'd do, so we're gonna go back on and do the colouring. So there we go. So we're going to look at the background on this and we're going to have a look at doing that. Okay. So again, when you look on the back of your artwork, it's more vibrant. If I bring in that colourway there, you can see. So if I go to this camera, You've still got the, the brightness on the front, but then also on the back, it's a lot more vibrant. And again, we spoke last week, didn't we, about doing the color on the front as well, and with the pencils to add that little bit more depth to it. Right, so have we got everything ready? If so, I think we'll begin. Okie dokie. Let's have a look. So we're going to work on the back and I'm going to bring my mix mat into play. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a couple of drops of the Dorso oil onto the front of, on my mix mat. Okay. Right. So 
we've got some dorso oil on there. I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to take my tissue, and this is called dorsing. And what you want to do is you want to fold it. I, to me, it reminds me of sort of like a piping bag. And you want to get a really nice, fine point on your tissue. Okay. Let me come in here so you can see. So I've got a really nice sort of point on my tissue. I say a tissue is easier because it, there's no texture to it. So it gives us a nice smooth surface to work on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip that, oh, way too much on there. I'm going to dip that into my dorsal oil. And I'm just going to go onto my mat and just let it absorb into the tissue. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to gently rub the back of the parchment where I want to put the large colour. And what this does, it does, it puts like an underlay down. Underlay, underlay. So, I don't know where that came from. And then we're going to go in there and just round those edges. So we need to be careful where we put the colour onto our butterfly. But what we're going to do, we're just going to, and it absorbs quite, I say absorbs, it evaporates. But it's got a slight, I don't know if you can see that, see how it's got a slight sheen on there. Okay, so I'm going to pop my mix mat to one side. And then let's have a look at the sky area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm holding my pencil at the side. You've often done this with Barb when you're sort of working on the side of the pencil. And what you're going to do is gently apply some colour to the background. Now I'm not worried about going, let's see if I can pop that onto there where you can see that. There we go. A little bit more difficult for me, but you know what, I think I can cope with that. So I'm just going to put the side of the pencil, and I'm not worried about going into the sun, because don't forget, we've got our special friend, the eraser pencil. Okay. So, we're just going to put on a very light colour in the background, and I think I've got some blue just around here as well. There we go. So it looks, you know like how we was doing the colouring the other day and how scratchy that looks. See how it looks all scratchy? But again, we've got the magic of the tissue. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to gently, it's still got the oil on it, we're now going to gently blend that in. And as you can see, especially for larger areas, this is great. See, again, I'm not worried about going over the edge. Now, if you've got too much oil on there, like I have, what it's doing is it's just taking it back off again. But not to worry, because we can go back in and we can apply more colour. There we go. So this is also great, especially working with those lovely landscape plates that you get in the starter kit. See, and I can get a nice, soft blend of colour. Okay, I'm just going to go right up to the edge. Come down there. But it's fantastic for, for doing larger areas really quickly. Now, if you've got the dorso crayons, you can do exactly the same with the dorso crayons as we're using with the pencils. So again, we're using the B pencils, which has got the white writing on them. And these are waxy pencils, so they're like the polychromos. They're a blendable pencil. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take my razor. I'm going to go white is probably better. And then I can remove where I've gone into that sun. See, again, this is the magic for me of those pencils. Take my brush and remove where I don't want, where I don't want the blue to be. See, nice and easy. See the magic. I know loads of you <laughs> have got these eraser pencils from the Shack Shack. 
I'm then just going to gently go around the edge. Again, a brush is good to get rid of all the way you're removing rather than using your hand because you don't want to spread the, the pigments on. So now when we hold that up, we can see how we've got a really soft, it's very subtle. I should have probably gone with a little bit darker. I wonder whether it shows up a bit better. Mm, not so well on the paper, but you know what? We can go in and we can add. See, again, you can build up the colors. See, so you can create depth. And because you put that undercoat down first, you'll find that the pencils move a lot more smoothly. Okay, so you're giving this a go. You can always practice on a piece first if you, if you don't feel confident enough to go straight onto your, your piece of artwork. So then we'll take our tissue again and then we'll blend it. So you can see now, yeah, you can definitely see that now, how I'm starting, oh, eraser, move to one side. How I can start to build up the depth of that colour. I mean, you could use the blending nibs as well to do it. It would just take a little bit longer to smooth out the colour. Yeah, look at that. You can really see now how the, the depth of the colour is starting to build up. So again, I'm just going to take my razor pencil and just get rid of the colour where I don't want it to be. How are you getting on? Is it working for you? You may need to, I mean, I went with a really light blue. If I'd gone with the darker blue, I, like this one here, which is the B4, then I would have got a darker colour more quickly. But to have that sort of soft, let's have a look, can you see that? There we go. Yeah, you can definitely see that now. I wonder if you can see it better on the overhead camera. Yeah, so you can see now how we're starting to do build up our colourway. And as I said before, if you're not into um, your colouring in, then go with the design of parchment. There's so many different, I'm just trying to grab this piece in front of me that doesn't want to play. Look, instant colour. The parchment does all the work for you. It's all about getting um, used to what you're working with. So say we've been working with the pencils and I thought that's what we'd stick with for this finished piece that we're working on. So now I reckon we could have a little bit of a lake down in the bottom. So should we go with that darker blue. So we go with the darker blue and then we're just going to go with the side of the pencil. Make sure you're still working on the back. Okay. There we go. So maybe what we'll do, we'll, yeah, we'll go with that. And then we'll take our tissue and then we're just going to blend in. And you can start to see, again, and I haven't loaded up the tissue, there's still plenty of oil on here. So I can go in, let's make it, i tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it safe in the smaller areas. And I'm going to smooth it out with my blending nib. There we go. So you've got a little bit more control, especially in those fine areas within there. You've got more control because it's got such a fine tip to the nib. See? And again, I'm not worried about where I've gone over the lines because I can get rid of it. And get rid of it in there as well and just round there so again the eraser pencil i mean i'm using the white end because for me it, it comes off a lot quicker but if you wanted to do some shading then you could use the the pink end and it's not as harsh there we go so now when i turn that over ooh, there we go you can see let me bring that in there See how we're now starting 
to build up our colours. Yeah? How are you getting on? It's it. Once you get into it, I mean, it's like a lot of things. The first time you do it and you think, oh, I can't do it. And for me, that's what the groovy system is about. The first time I did it traditionally, no, 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 no. But with the groovy plates, it gives you that confidence. And again, this piece here, whether you're using it as a completed piece or whether you're using it as your practice and you're going to put it in a file and refer back to it, make little notes in a book and say, right, well, I did this, I did that, I went wrong here, I went wrong there, or that worked, that didn't work. It's all about just learning and having a go. Because again, if you don't try something, how are you going to know whether you like doing it? I suppose it's like a lot of things, really. I don't know, sort of food, I mean, don't talk to me. I'm the world's worst, fussiest eater. Really, no sauces, nothing. It has to be completely plain. Give me a traditional Sunday dinner and I'd eat that every day. Um, but again, I should, and everyone said I should try different things and spices and stuff like that, but ooh, I don't know. Anyway, let's have a look back at where it is. So again, we're working on the back. Quick mouth for a coffee, sorry about that. Working on the back. So now we're going to go with the greens. So we're going to do exactly the same as before. The side of the pencil. And then this time I'm going to do all of the heels in the same shade to start with. So I've gone on with the, the light green first. And again, we're just using the side of the pencil. Oh, that razor really wants to play today. We're going to go right along just to the sides of the pencil. So it just starts to, to build up. We've got that little bit in there. Just to. And what's great about this is that you, you go on very lightly because, as we know, the dorso oil spreads the pigment, doesn't it? So we're just going to go on there and just start to sort of just build up our colour. So I'm going to use a different part of the tissue. So this time I'm going to go this way. I just want a nice point again to, to get into my area. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the oil. And again, as I said, if you've got too much oil, um, this is on the, the mix mat. So don't think I'm doing it on the parchment, it's not doing anything. I'm doing it on the mix mat just to, to blend it in. See, look, you can really start to see it go now. And we can really get a nice, and it's a quick and easy way of doing large areas. What I could have done when I was doing my butterfly, my, my base color was a yellow. And then remember how I used the red on the flowers to blend in? So I could have done this with the, the yellow and then just gone in and highlighted the red and blended it that way. But I like to do this just to show you the different ways of applying colour. Okay. Happy with that? Yep. Yeah erase a pencil and then just get rid of and even where it's gone into the sky a little bit I can still go back in and just remove it okay we're going to go around tidy up the edge of our circle stencil brush so now when I turn that over you can see how we've got that lovely background. But it's very similar in colour to the butterfly, so I need those hills there to stand out a little bit more. So if I go with the darker green now, so I can change, so again, just using the side of the pencil. And then I'm gonna do the same heel for this one here. 
So you can really get a nice blend of colors. Okay. How are we doing? Are you giving this a go? It, it's really easy. Once, when you realize that if you make a boo-boo or you make a mistake, all you need is the eraser pencil and you can take it all back and start again. I'm going, to go, I'm going to use a blending nib to go into that area. So another one, nice clean nib there. I probably need a little bit of oil just to help it. There we go. Just to help it move the blending because obviously we had the oil, didn't we, on the tissue. There we go. On there. If you get any harsh areas, then the oil will just blend that in. And I'm keeping it sort of very simple in relation to the colours because, again, over the course of the year, we can sort of look at different areas of colouring in. So I'm going to get rid of that just long. It really is key. I love my razor pencil. <laughs> I really do. Hmm, forgot to take some colour out of that one. There we go. So now when we turn that over, look how that's now just brought that to life. But the only thing we've got left now is to do a lovely sun. So... On this one, we're going to go with the yellow. And we want a really nice, intense yellow. Let's have a look. So we're going on a little bit more heavier with the colour, because the more colour you put on, the heavier it becomes, or the more brighter. So then I'm going to use another blending nib. Take up a little bit of the oil off the mix mat, and so I can get a really nice. And we, remember when we was colouring in, I said how I go in like a swirly motion. I just find going in that sort of circular swirly motion, you get a nice. You don't get any streaks. There we go. So I've got a nice. So again, because I want that sun to, to stand out a little bit more from the green hills, see, because it's very similar in colour tone. I mean, it, it's yellow. And what I can do is take a little bit of the dark green and just put a little bit of shade just on the top. So again, just very, very light scribble of colour. And then, did I, I had a green nib, didn't I? Yep. And then, just to, a little bit of oil. Just to add a little bit of depth to the top of those hills. So that the sun, so not my voice, it, my voice goes slow, even when I'm colouring in. Do you? Luckily you can't see my face, because my tongue sticking out. <laughs> but you can get a real nice colourway. Okay. So now we've got a little bit more definition to that hill. So if we look at it from the top, you can see now how we've got the beautiful blue in the sky, we've got the little lake, and then we've got the, the hills and the mountains, or all hills in this case. So, how are we getting on? Have you managed to, to again, if you go wrong, erase a pencil. It is, it's, for me, not that I don't worry about what I'm doing, but I know with the groovy plate is my safety net for tracing out the line art. 
The eraser is my safety net when I'm colouring in the pencils. And if you've got the polychromos, the, it works perfectly as well, as you'll see Barb using it in the shack all the time. So it's all about having that confidence and having a get out clause, really. And for me, when working with the pencils, the eraser pencil is my get out clause. So, 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 another drop of coffee. How are we doing? Half past already. Right, okay. I think we need to sort of move on. Okay. Different ways of colouring in. So we've been looking at the B pencils and we've used those in conjunction with the Dorso oil. Okay. So the B pencils, again, you can just go straight on or you can use the blending oil to sort of work with those. Now, one of the other beautiful products from Pergamano, which is us, is the Perga Colour Exclusive Pens. These are absolutely gorgeous. You've got 30 different colours in here, and it's a real sort of palette of beautiful colourways. It goes all the way from the yellows, to the pinks, to the purples, to the ivories, to the greens, browns, some more pinks. Look, you can just see you've got a really nice colour palette. Now, when we're working with parchment, obviously, parchment, is, for those that are new to it, parchment doesn't like moisture. So you couldn't take sort of like a, a watercolour paint, for example, and go on the back of it, because if the parchment gets too wet, then what happens is it buckles and there's no going back from it. The oil that we use with the pencils it sort of evaporates. Um, and it doesn't leave any residue on the parchment. It just creates that beautiful blend of the pigments. So I'm going to put my masterpiece to one side. And remember we did this bit where, that we did where we was practicing. Grab that. And if you've got the pen, so we can work alongside that together just to show a few different ways on how the pens work. Okay, so we're going to work on the back as well. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to take a selection of colours. Now, you can go directly onto the parchment with them and colour in, but you can also tone the colourways down as well. So let me show you. For example, if I take the green, I can colour directly on the back of my work. Okay, and I can go to the fine tip for the smaller areas. So you can really get in close. And you can use these pencils in your stamping as well. These are fantastic water-based pencils. So when I turn that over, you can see now I've got, you can see I've got a really nice vibrant colour. However, I've gone over the edge slightly. Now, I can't remove that with my eraser. Well, I say I can't remove it. Let's try it. Let's see if it... I don't think it does. It might prove me wrong. Oh, it did. Okay. It did get <laughs> rid of it. You learn something new every day. Maybe because I'd only just gone on to it. I wonder whether... Here's some that I was colouring in this morning. I wonder whether I can... It does, but it does leave a pigment on there. It doesn't take it out completely like it does with the pencils. If I'd coloured these in with pencils, then it would lift it off straight away. And this was, I was practicing this morning just to show the different colourways on what you can do. So I think I was lucky on removing that bit there. Okay. So it's, it's good to know these things and to try. And because I'm using my practice piece, I know now that if I wanted to do what I'm doing now onto my finished piece, there's ways around it. So we've got that really nice vibrant green there. Okay. But if I want to get a softer tone, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my other mix map. So this one that says water. Okay. So you get two mix map. Both got labels on them. One says water and one says oil. It's not to say that they're any different. It's just good for identification. So 
yesterday in the shack, Barb was using the pencils and you could leave the pencils on there. She was using the A pencils and you can leave that color on there and it becomes a color palette. So when it dries, you can reactivate it with water. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this green, I'm gonna go to the, the larger nib and I'm just gonna scribble out some color on there. Now you've got choices. If you've got the blending pen and the nibs, then that's great. So I'll go there and I can pick up the color and I can have, find a leaf and I can put some color in the background. And what you'll notice is that as it starts to, to dry, it stops moving. So I can pick up that color and use it to color on the back. So again, this was the one that we went direct onto the parchment with the, the pen direct. And then this one up here gives you a softer tone to it. Now what I also found was that the water brushes work fantastically, but without the water. These are a really good brush. The quality of the nibs, you've got three different sizes. I'm using the larger ones. You've got three different size nibs. You've got med thin, medium, and thick. Okay, and you can see I've been using it, but there's no water in them because what I wanna do is just use the, the fine nib to pick up my color and I don't want to add any water to it. So now when I go in, let's have a look, Where's, let's do this one. See, I can go in and for some reason it sort of, there really isn't any water in here as, at all, but it just gives a completely different look. And if you think, if you're quick, you can blot it off because I went over the line there. So I can pick up And because I've got these fine nibs, I can really control where my color is. So I'm gonna do this one here, and then I'm gonna go direct into the color on the one next to it. And when we turn that over, you can see this one, this one here is where I've used the brush, and this one here is where I've gone on, on direct, okay? So it's just a couple of ways that you can use the pencils if you don't want such a dominant bright color, okay? So again, what I can do, see I can't blot this one, this one won't do anything because it's gone on direct, but I can still lift off that color there so I can pick up, and say there's no water. These are just fantastic nibs on the tips of these brushes for applying the color onto the back. And it seems to stay wet longer, because maybe because I'm putting a, a lighter coat on. And then what I can do, I can then just clean my nib with a bit of tissue. You can run this under the tap and clean it, but really you don't want to get the nib um, wet, you just want to keep it as it is. So then if I go to the red, for example, so we'll put some red, can we see that? Okay, I'll put some red on there. And then I can use the nib to pick up that color. And then let's have a look, let's go, let's go to this little tulip. See, and you can really, start to sort of get a nice, see how it's moving. It, it's as if there's water in it, but there, there really isn't. These brushes are completely dry and there's no water in the barrel at all. But you can see how you can get a nice color tone. See, so again, when we turn that over, you've got a softer, I mean, if I go direct in with the red, just so that you can see the difference, I'll just, a bit round, I'm gonna do a red leaf. 
but it's just so you can see the difference between the two. Okay. So again, you can use your blending nibs, but the nibs on these water brushes, just because it says, it's the same as it, just because it says Pergamano on the tin doesn't mean it's just for parchment craft. And the same, just because they say they're water brushes doesn't mean you have to use them with water. They're fantastic nibs just to use dry with these inks. And it's the same with the, um, if you've got distress ink pads or you've got the little artistry ink pads. I'm just gonna grab some artistry ink pads just to show you how you can do it with those as well. Ooh, he says fall, nearly falling off his chair. Okay, so again, you would just take a color. So if I go, for example, I've got orange popsicle. You can just squidge out on there onto your mix mat. And then if I take that brush again, I can pick up that color and I can then, see that, yep, and I can color in. So if you've got ink pads as well, don't think they're just for stamping. You can use them for coloring in as well. See, and you get a really nice Cutter. And again, you could build that up color-wise as well. So it's just a couple of different tips on sort of the different coloring methods. And again, as crafters, we've all got lo loads of different pens, pencils, in our sash, ink pads as well. So try and bring in what you've already got. I think that was one of the great things that when we launched the Groovy system, Barbara and myself, we was coming as stampers so we had all the distress markers, we had the polychromo pencils, and we didn't know whether it would work or whether it wouldn't work. So we experimented. And it's surprising that just some ink pads, what you can do with it. So if you've got these ink pads here, for example, you've got four, eight, 12 different colors in there. And again, you can do exactly the same on your mix mat. You can combine colors and build up, which Bob's been showing in the, the shack yesterday. So that's another way of applying colour. But if you want to go for larger areas, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop that to one side because that's still wet. So say for example I wanted to put a, a nice colour in the middle of this one. Don't forget this is my practice piece. So we go back to our tissue. And I've got my mix mat that says oil on it. And what we're going to do is I'll use the dorsal crayons. So again, some people have got these and think, well, what do I do with them? I don't know how they work. So if I put some oil, whoa, way too much oil. Okay. Overkill. Let me just get a tissue. <laughs> that was like half a bottle. No, it wasn't really. Way too much on there. Smells lovely though. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is you use the crayon and I'm mixing it in with the oil. And what it does, it creates like a liquid paint. Okay. And then we can take our tissue and we can pick up our color and then we can go in and we can then color larger areas. So you can get some real nice blends of color as well. See how we can start to, oh, there we go, sort of build that up. Okay, and again, you can go back in by building up your color as well. And so you can intensify it. So you just let that dry for a bit and then go back in again. So you've got a beautiful selection of colorways in the Dorso crayons, um, the lively colors and the naturals. And again, if you've got the whites, you can get different shades of greens. You've got the reds. So you can real, really get a nice blend and color palette by combining both of those if you choose to. Okay. 
how was that? I think that was okay. I think <laughs> hopefully you've picked up a couple of little bits of things. I mean, again, it's the learning, isn't it? I can try it and then show you and show you if it does work, if it doesn't work. But again, where you've got this scrap of parchment, just practice on it. At the end of the day, I mean, look, I've used this and I've tested my, my watercolours on there. I've gone direct on with the pen. I've used the Dorso crayons. It's just a great way of just having a piece like this to practice. It's like if I stamp out an image, say of one of the lovely little poppets, and I want to practice my colouring, I always stamp out a second one, and then I practice on one to see whether I've got the colours right, and then I'll go into my first one. So have a scrap piece of parchment that you can practice on just to try the different techniques. Oh, coffee's gone cold now. Ooh, I made it way too early before the show. Okay, some finishing tricks. How do we attach a beautiful piece of artwork that we've created over these last couple of weeks to a card? Okay. Do you want to trim it down? Do you want to sort of chop it up a little bit smaller? Do you want to keep it the size that it is? There's so many different ways of attaching parchment. So for example, if I want to pop it on here, because this is the Indian summer, it's got that beautiful colour tones. See, I can go more subtle as well, so it makes these colours stand out. But you know what, I quite like the, the more patterned background in the background because it adds some character to the rest of the area. A really quick and easy way of attaching to your card is to create an aperture. So I've taken one of our nested circles, a piece of our card, and I've just die cut a circle in the middle. So what that means is that I can stick it to the back of this card with glue, a dry glue is better, and it's not gonna show, okay? So again, you could do it as a square, you could do it as a circle. I just thought since we were circular, but look at that, if you were to sort of trim that back, you've got a beautiful piece of artwork. You can do it in white, you could do it in craft card, depending on the colors that you've used, okay? So that's a really quick and easy way of attaching it to your card. Another way of attaching it to your card for your finished piece is what we did back in the beginning. I'm going to do it on this piece to show you, is a wrap around. So for example, let me just grab a piece of card. So I've taken a piece of craft card, which is the same, slightly, I cut that wrong, there we go. Probably just, yeah. So what you can do is I'm going to, so this is an A5 piece of parchment. So I've taken a piece of card and I've trimmed it down. I need to trim a little bit more off. So let me just take my pencil. There, pencil it says. And my paper trimmer. I know it's really, I don't know why I do it. It's, it has to be exact. Be the same. It has to be, <laughs> go with the flow. So I'm working on the back of my parchment so I can see where I want to, to position it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a little, I'm using a pen so you can see it. I'm putting a little mark there, a little mark there, and at the bottom, and at the bottom there. Okay, so that gives me my four points. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Pergamano ruler, and I'm gonna score using my number two tool. And I don't wanna emboss it, I just want to score it slightly. Okay, so we're gonna do that. If I wanted to emboss it more, I to do it, I would do it on a soft mat. Let me show you the difference. Let me grab my black mat, which has got the soft side, 
just so you can see the difference. So again, you've got to be careful that you don't put too much pressure on. So maybe I'm going to go with the, the number three ball tool. And I'm just going to gently score it. So you can see, that's what I've done on that side. But on this side, I've done it on the hard mat so that I don't create that embossed line. But again, practice. Take your practice piece and sort of try it. Then all I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to gently, I'm going to use the ruler just to hold that in place and then fold that over. Because once that's folded, it's folded. There's no going back. See, so gently does it. Give it a little press, press, press. Okay. And then press down. So now what that means is you can take your piece of card and you can slot that in there, stick it from the back, and then that hides any glue as well. Okay, so that's another way of attaching your finished artwork to a card. So then you would put that onto a larger card and then that's done and there's no glue at all. So what I'm going to do on my practice piece, I'm going to just trim off these bits that I folded. Okay. I'll just take my trimmer. Waste not, want not. Might as well use the same bit. It's only a practice piece after all. Okay. So then the next method is Brad's. Another quick and easy way of attaching it. And it looks nice as well. So then what for that, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in my super foam. So you've got a nice depth to it. And I'm going to take that there. And then I've got a selection of my little brads in this pot. So we'll just do some random colours. Oh, so I've got some blues there. I wonder if I... These are super fine, these little brads. Am I going to get another two blue ones? Another one there. Come on, one more blue. You watch up. Oh, there we go. Another blue. Come on, my little blue Brad. Okay. So I've got my Brads. I've got my artwork. I've got my super foam. And then all I need is my one needle bold. And again, in an ideal world, I trim that down. So I'm going to puncture through to create my hole. I'm going to take my brad and I'm going to push it into the hole and into the foam. And what that's doing, that's helping me now hold everything in place. So I'm going to come over to my opposite corner, make a hole, take my brad, and come on, in you go, push into there. So again, it's keeping it nice and secure. And then we're going to go over to this one. So you just repeat, once you've got two in place, you know it's going to hold it. And because the brads are within the mat, then it's not going anywhere. So we attach that one into, oops. That one goes into there. And then we can gently remove that from our foam. Turn it over. And I remember when I was at school, these were called split pins or paper fasteners. And then I'm just twisting it so it's at like a right angle. Because I've gone right up to that corner. If I was to open it out, it'd stick out the other side of the, the card. So you can just manipulate it so that it creates, very camera, 
that little so it doesn't stick out over the edge okay and the last one there we go and that is now attached so that's another way of attaching your work but one of the ones that I love the most is the corner punches now we've got a selection of four different patterns of the corner punches okay so we've got a nice straight line a curved and then we've got fancy patterned ones as well so it depends what look you want if you want to keep it nice and simple and classic then for example on this one I've used my corner punch uh, the circular one this one here okay now there isn't an exact size for example if I said to you your piece of parchment was five by five then the card needs to be five and a quarter or five and half a quarter type thing there isn't there, there's a knack to it and once you get it, it's obvious and it becomes easier, okay? So if you're not sure, you don't wanna ruin your card, then practice on a piece of copy paper, okay? So you get the, and then if you've got the copy paper, the size that you want it, then you could then potentially trim down your piece of card to the same size, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. So for example, if I take a piece of copy paper, and uh, let's go with, oh, let's go with this nice scalloped one. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're just going to pop that into there. I bet I haven't emptied these in a while. Right, okay, how to empty your punch. On the reverse, you've got this little, uh, and you slide it along, and then slides out, empty it out, and that's where all the mechanisms are in there. And then you just slide that in, clicks back in place, and you're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna pop that into there, and it goes right into the corner, and then we're just gonna press. Okay, so you can see, that gives us that lovely patterned edge there, okay? Then, if I take my piece of parchment, so let's see, I don't wanna, I'm gonna take one of the sample ones that I've done already, because I don't wanna cut up just yet my finished piece. So what you're gonna do is pop it into place. Okay, so you get it, probably a little bit difficult. Can you, no. Can you see that it's just very, very, there's a very slim edge on this one, okay? So I'll go back to the overhead so you can see what I'm doing. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, our parchment's in place. I'm gonna take my Pergamano ruler that's got the groovy grip on it, okay, which stops my ruler sliding around. Hold my parchment down and then I reckon it's about, if I was to light it, Maybe I should use, let me, do, do, do. okay, so imagine I'm using, right, this is a piece of copy paper. You'll be able to see it a lot more clearly. Come on, Paul, sort it out. Right, this is a piece of copy paper if you want to practice first. So we're going to punch our first corner. Okay, so let's put, let's put that underneath so you can see that. There we go. So you, you can go under and come up again, or you can just go like that and you can see that. Come. So there's a couple of different ways that you can attach. That's a lot better. So you can see now how there's a very fine edge along there. So what I was talking about, when we look at the ruler, I'd say the width of that metal steel bar that's in the edge is probably enough of an edge to give us our right measurement, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that that is on nice and straight. I've got my groovy grip on my ruler, okay? And then I'm gonna take a craft knife and along that steel edge, 
Now I'm not worried about cutting into my artwork because my artwork is being protected with the ruler. So I reckon we're good to go on that one. And then if I turn it round, and I'm going to use the same measurement just there. And I can use the straight lines on here to make sure that it's lined up straight. Now, you could, if you're not so good with a craft knife, you could mark this with a pencil, remove your artwork, and chop it down on a paper trimmer. Okay. There we go. So I didn't put enough pressure on. Oh dear, oh dear. I can't believe where the time's going. Oh no, that's not right. Okay. So this is the moment of truth, whether it's all going to fit. Okay. So again, if this is copy paper, I'm not worried because I know that I can adjust it from there. So all we're going to do is go in and punch all four corners. So it means it could be a square, it could be a rectangle, it doesn't matter what size your artwork is, then this will fit. Then we're going to pop that just in there. That one goes in there. That one in there. Oh, I reckon we've done it. That one in there. Hey, there we go. And that is how you would use the corner punches. And as I say, they're all slightly different in relation to the distance away from the edge of your parchment. So if you've done it on a, a piece of copy paper and you say, right, well, that measures, what does it measure? That measures, that black piece of card is just under 15 centimeters. So you could then cut your piece of black card to size based on what you've done on your copy paper and then do it on your nice card or your nice designer paper as well. So again, it's a nice way of attaching it to it. And I love the, the different corners that we've got. So let me just show you the four different designs on a piece of card, just so you can see the different designs you've got. Because although it looks nice on the, on the punch, so we've got that one there. We've got, this one reminds me of one of those superheroes designs. That one there, and that one there, and finally that one there. So there are the four designs of the different corner punches as well. So it depends on what type of finish you want to get to your artwork. Okay. So where do we go from here? So today we've covered different colouring in techniques using the different mediums from the pens, the pencils, the dorso crayons. You can still use the dorso crayons to pick up the colour as well to colour in with. The ink pads, the artistry or the distress ink pads that you've got, you can use those. As long as it's a water-based ink pad, then you can work with those perfectly. Just squidge them out onto your mat. We also looked at colouring in larger areas as well. And then finally, it was just to finish off our piece and show how we can mount it in various different ways. I mean, there's other ways you can use the perga glue behind the white work, but that only sticks in certain areas. But for starting out and quick and easy ways, then the punches, the brads, wrap around, the aperture. I, like, I quite like the aperture effect as well because you don't see anything and it creates that beautiful frame. So we've learned loads of different bits and pieces this week. Next week, I thought we're going to turn a circle into a square. So what we're going to have a look at next week, we're going to combine all of the different techniques that we've learned over the previous couple of weeks, and we're going to create a square card. So again, we're going to use the nested squares that comes in the starter kit, and we're really going to look at that beautiful butterfly plate and work out how to use different elements on it. So it's just taking it that little bit further outside of the box and really getting the most on the plates that you've got within the starter kits. So again, we can put a landscape behind it. And again, little different tips and tricks. 
So thank you for joining me again this week. I hope I can see you again next week where we'll carry on working with these plates as well just to show and we're going to take all the different techniques the number one tool the number two tool the number three tool so that we can really do some more white work and it's like a little recap and a refresher just to show a different way of using the plates so as i say thank you for joining me i hope i see you next week don't forget barbara's back in the shack shack tomorrow with the beautiful pop it postcards so if you want any of those then make sure you grab those and um, and I shall see you again next week. Take care and stay safe. Stay home and craft. Safe, happy and creative. Bye-bye.